everybody, my name is Brandon Jones. I'm the editor in chief, founder of Voice, and host of GT Live now. I can add that dink right onto the resume. <laughs> Welcome to Let's All Go to the Trailers. I'm joined by Mr. Kyle Bossman. Hi, everybody. And Mr. Daniel Bloodworth. Hello. You don't love trailers anymore, Kyle? That ended? <laughs> No, Kyle, it's over. It's over. You Kyle had a loves trailers so much that while I'm scrambling to get everything ready for the weekend, 15 minutes after Brandon's email was up, I was like, Kyle's like, you ready? I'm like, no, what are, you, what are you talking about? I love trailers. I think you made fun of me last time, so I thought, you know, maybe it's played out. I shouldn't say I love trailers anymore. I still love trailers. I gotta find work for Kyle to do on Fridays. So, <laughs> Kyle loves trailers. Bloodworth is cursed by trailers. <laughs> I'm not cursed by them. I just... <laughs> Uh, the time, the timing is, is Look, Ruth really has time for trailers. Well, hopefully you guys have time for trailers. Let's get into them. 207 Alex, Rocky, move in. Fuck you! We haven't talked about Battlefield Hardline yet, have we? Oh yeah, we did. We talked about that live action. Oh right? yeah, we did. Which, to go back and reference, was actually about an event that was like, they were gonna do a stunt show or some kind of party for Battlefield in the UK or somewhere. This trailer is a very good edit, uh, actually, uh, to name drop another show that premiered this week, uh, uh, Shane Satterfield's new side, Sifted Games, uh, has a podcast called Game Face that they do live every week on Twitch. This was their trailer of the week. The one thing that I think is the best about this trailer, there's lots of really great action, lots of really great shots, uh, lots of fun dialogue put in there. It hits the music really well. Like, the gameplay hits, they, they, there's lots of punching and cars smacking into each other right on the beat. I think it actually does it a little too much because there is a lot of impact when stuff really hits on the beat but when you do things really obviously like kicking and punching and like every single one of those hits a beat then it kind of lessens the impact of them by the time you get to the end of the trailer not to mention just dudes punching dudes too many times in one trailer like we're not <laughs> even, we can't even hear the audio right now and like i'm kind of sick of it the other thing too uh just to criticize the trailer is there's a lot of back talk going on in the trailer there's a lot of fun cop quips, but I don't really get a sense of what the story is. You know, like, I would have liked, considering this is the launch, this is the last time I'm going to see these characters, you know, before this game comes out, uh, it, it seems like this game is just selling, like, hey, you know, there's criminals and cops, and they do what they do. I'm hoping there's a little bit more to the story. I, I don't get that out of the trailer, but the action is is crazy. Uh, the game looks great. Um, there's lots of fun moments. Uh, I like the moment of her with the gun. It reminds me of uh, the blonde from Wolfenstein. When she's cracking up and pointing the gun at you from uh, the other side of the table. You got your quotes in there. You got everything you need in the launch trailer. What do you think, Kyle? Uh, I think it is a pretty good trailer. My biggest problem with it are the choices of dialogue. Some of the choices, I think, were made just to show, hey, we say the F word in this game. Uh, the first two lines you hear, you got the F word, the F bomb drop. And then later on, you see like what I assume is the main character. Basically, it's just like, they're going to do this, and he just goes, F that. <laughs> like, just like a, a, a real, like, plain white bread way of delivering that line, but it's just like, we should put that in, because it's the F word. Let's go, let's go, let's show them how mature we are. <laughs> um, but I think it's a really good use of music. I, I, I think they, yeah, I'm, I'm into it every time you cut on a beat. I'm happy with that. No, no this is so tiny and stupid. Okay, so you put your visceral Bang it anyway. You, you're, you're putting it... I'm the shields in your game, cool Easter egg, but weird to feature it in your trailer. <laughs> you know what I mean? Cool Easter egg for the game, weird thing to press on your trailer, I guess, to focus on on your trailer. I feel like this trailer tries to have it all in, in a way, and and I I enjoy it very thoroughly from beginning to end. But it, it is a little the the question I have at the end of this trailer is, did I just see everything? Because <laughs> there is a lot of action. I feel like pretty much. Almost every big scene has to be in here without even being, you know, familiar with with how the game lays out. And there are a lot of, to the point, uh, to this trailer's credit, there are a lot of things that are actually rehashed that I've seen in previous trailers that they package in a different way. Like there's clearly some scene of this actress in the entryway of a house, and the house gets shot up, and she gets hit in the shoulder, and then you like pull her over to the side, and then start shooting at people. I've seen that a couple times, and they go through it pretty quickly. I, you know, we've seen that crane crash through that building about a billion times. I think there's a GameStop commercial right now that's even making a joke out of it. <laughs> What's interesting to me is that they they kind of even like for a trailer, they kind of pull in every different direction because when it starts, I feel kind of, kind of like there is sort of like a story set. Where there's like, okay, here's the cop side of the story, here's a here's a criminal side of the story, and then it just kind of like goes into it full force, and you get a lot of action in the, in the dialogue, and then the 
the quotes in there. So it's, it's kind of pulling everything in there, but I think even so, it, like, it manages to do it really well, and there's a lot of action with the music and with the timing on the beast. Like, it kind of gets you excited for the game, whether you actually are or not. <laughs> I'm kind of getting a seizure just watching it now, actually. There's a lot of... Uh, there is a lot of flashing. There's not only a lot of flashing, meaning like you bring in a black frame and then come back to the footage, and so it just kind of flashes when people are shooting guns or punching people, or uh, when you begin a scene or you end a scene. But there's a lot of red and blue flashes that come in over the footage. It's not something that they really focus on, like you're saying, like the shield, Kyle. Like They don't really put it front and center. It just uh, isn't something that I really noticed until I'm watching the trailer for like the tenth time. I think this is pretty good. It's edited really well. We, we talk about editing and just kind of throw that word around. My brain tells me to give it an 8, but my heart's going to give it an 8.2. Just because someone spent a, a, a very, very long time cutting this video. Or somebody spent a short time, and that means they're a fantastic editor. I mean, this was... This is cinemas, this is dialogue, this is gameplay. Um, you know, obviously we don't see anything from the HUD, but uh, I just think a, a tremendous amount of work was put into this. So, uh, hats off to whoever cut this. Good job. Uh, yeah, I'm going to the 8.4. I think it's a very good trailer. I think that what it accomplishes is shows a game that is a big deal. Uh, this poor game has a lot going against it coming in, you know, launching so late. And so with this trailer, you have a lot of work to do to show everyone, hey, this is still a big game. This game is still an event that was going to come out last fall. Uh, and so, you know, you still have to make it a big game. And I, th I think it succeeds there. Anything that's missing is a weird hook. A game that, a moment you haven't seen in any other game is really what it's missing. I'd probably be a little, a little bit higher, like 8.6, I think. Even though I'm not sure if I'm going to get any time to play this game. But it, uh, yeah, I, I think it, it's exciting. It, it keeps things moving. It almost kind of throws me off. I have to get used to this now, is seeing seeing actors in video games. Because it's like, there's a guy like, there's a guy from Infamous. It's like, I don't know what his name is as the an actor, but I know the guy in Infamous, and yeah. he looks just like that. Uh, Brandon <laughs> called her an actor earlier, actually. He said that that actor, you pull her aside, is really interesting that you look at them that way. Well, I think they definitely want to, I mean, they're playing up that this is a show. They've said that, that they yeah. want this to feel like a TV show, and so we're in that gen, baby. We are. Yeah. We're in the, it is the future of video games. We uh, can recognize these people not just as characters, but, uh, but as actors. There are our scores. Let's move on. Okay, there have got to be people that watch more than one show on this website that are just like, please, please stop talking about Bloodborne. <laughs> <laughs> and and the reason I'm excited about Bloodborne is because, and I've mentioned this a billion times, but I, I, I have not been into the Souls games. And even if I'm just downright terrible at this game, i got to get into this. My critique of this trailer is there are things I've seen in this before. They're showing off bosses. Granted, this is kind of like a rogues gallery of all of these crazy bosses that we have seen. I think the, well, one reason why it was a little bit distracting, and maybe this might be intentional, I think the mix was a little weird. The you know, sound mix is definitely weird. I, 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 well, at first it's intentional, but then even later on I have a hard time hearing it. Uh, but I think it is interesting to have that detached audio because it gives you the sense that you're just delirious. And you're just like seeing the stuff coming up in your face and you're just like, what's going on? I don't know. I actually kind of like that. But later on, while they're still talking, it is still kind of hard to hear them when it shouldn't be, it seems. But it makes sense for me in a game like this for a lot of the speech to be, you know, distant and echoey and ghostly and for you to kind of be leaning in. You know, horror movies love to do that where they have people talk really quietly and then bring in the loud sound effects to scare you. What I really like about this trailer, and it's funny that we just got done talking about Battlefield because this is like the absolute opposite of what we just saw. Because you look at something like Battlefield and it's like, okay, car jumping off a building, cranes, zip lines, I get it. Where this trailer is just full of what on earth am I looking at right now? And I like that for all of the uh, incredible action that we're seeing, a lot of the bosses that get really up in your face, uh, and a lot of the really loud banging that happens in this trailer, there's a lot of stuff that happens like off in the distance. You know, I, I love the, the shot in the theater where you see this thing kind of slumping on the ground. I love where you're looking down this long hallway and you see this thing, you know, uh, you know, hunched over with this giant bulbous pod just like, you know, shaking back and forth on its back. This is a trailer that plays to exactly the reason you should be playing this game, which is I want to explore these environments. I want to see what these things are up close. You know, uh, when that we see that shadow and hear the flesh ripping and blood pouring out, it's like, what just happened? I, and I want to get in this game. I want to see these horrible things happen in real time. So, yeah, I mean, a lot of what we see in this trailer uh, is, like, kind of what IGN showed off last month. 
it's cool they, there's still new stuff to show of this game with your launch trailer. Like, this is your last chance to show people something that will sell them. Uh, what I really like about this trailer is the the scene where you see a fancy house, you see lots of many paintings, a legacy, of a family timeline, and some really nice uh, candles and things, and you hear a woman crying. And I feel like just showing that scene alone and letting that speak for itself uh, really sets a tone for your game, and I really appreciate anything like that in a, in a triple-A budget game, you know what I mean? Just to spend some time to just set a scene instead of showing only action. Uh, yeah, for me, what I think is, is interesting is uh, that they, well, for one, I think they do a really good job of setting the mood, as Kyle was saying. Uh, but I think it's it's interesting to see, that, like, it's not afraid to have these slow shots here, of, you know, of the kind of the horse and carriage and, and, and a lot of the environment shots. But then whenever you get into the action and gameplay, uh, the cuts are a lot faster. And, and so it, it kind of gives you that, like, oh, what's going on? What's that? What's this? You know, and so it's, it, it kind of builds your anticipation because you get a glimpse of it. You see the action, but you don't, you know, it, it's not uh, it's not going on to where you're just, like, watching somebody play the game. Um, but it's still actually gameplay, which I think is great. I'm in a little bit more of a, a sheltered on Bloodborne, I guess, because I didn't watch all the IGN things. I've, I've been kind of steering away from from media so most of this for me is pretty new there are things that have been in there since the beginning mm -hmm. since last e3 definitely you know great to see you know the differences in in, in gameplay and, and creature design and that kind of thing and it's just gorgeous they've they they picked a lot of really good moments they picked a lot of good action moments and it's it's remarkable that you know i've seen a lot of these bosses and i've seen some of these environments and some of these fights and yet they can still show off Parts of it, you know, that uh, that seem exciting. Uh, another reason to contrast it uh, to Battlefield is I get a lot of sense of confidence from Battlefield. You know, it's like you know you're a cop and you're going to take these criminals down no matter what happens. And this trailer, you know, like a lot of the other advertising for Bloodborne, is kind of like good luck. <laughs> you know, like, you're going to go up against these things and you got these weapons and uh, things are probably not going to work out well for you. Well, and the uh, thing at the end where he kind of just like collapses in the field. You know, I'm like, what's the, and then the creepy baby, I don't have any idea what to make of. But but that, that scene before the baby is really interesting to me. You didn't like the creepy baby, Kyle. I thought that was too much. You only get one. I think you get one fade up after you show the title. You can't have two. I do like that you're expecting some giant, fleshy, bloody mass to come flying out of the carriage, and it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and so that's really great. It's a good lesson for horror trailers and horror films that it's really great to build up that tension. I think because of the mystery surrounding the trailer and because... Uh, it does kind of set up a little more of the lore to me rather than just jokes and quips that we were talking about in Battlefield. Edges it 0 .1, just slightly past Battlefield. So I'll give it an 8.1. Uh, I'm going 9.1 on this one. Ooh. Uh, great job picking out dialogue, I think, in, in this case. Uh, I think the lines were chosen uh, with a strong intent. Like, hey, we're actually building on what you should expect. So they talk about hunters and like what what becomes of hunters when they play, like you. They're talking about you and what is, how you're going to do uh, going through this game. I like that. I like the, its use of music. Uh, and I like its kind of incoherence in a way. I'm good with it. Good trailer. I give it a 8.8. .8. I really like it. I think some of, some of it, the things that kind of threw me off were, you know, as we were saying, the, the audio being a bit low. Actually, what Kyle was saying about the hunters is like I think it was it was good to kind of build that in there and to kind of get a sense of what you are, but I also feel like th I get this kind of sense of things from from Japanese trailers once in a while to where they they like almost are too repetitive in their language. They're like hunter this and hunter that and hunter this other thing. And I'm like, okay, we get it. You're a hunter. I got it. It's, it's, uh, it's another it's a synonym. Pull out a thesaurus here. You know. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> well, it's like Kingdom Hearts. I read the Kingdom Hearts scripts, and like heart is in every sentence. You know, it's like yeah. uh, I'm I'm pretty low this week. That never happens. I'm always way too high. I always start out way too high, and then you guys like give me the realist score. Yeah, you you've been higher than me most of the time, Kyle. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. you'll we'll see how number three does. We shall see. <laughs> Well, I can start off by saying I really, 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 really like this trailer. 
This not only is a great trailer, I can really break it down structurally and point out why I like the different elements of it. It doesn't waste your time. It's barely two minutes. I think it's like a minute 45, uh, which I think was really smart uh, for a launch trailer to tease a lot of these elements and show this stuff very quickly. It has, it's got a great build. It basically sold Ori as being a lot more exciting than I thought it was. Mm -hmm. uh, I played this at Comic-Con last year and I played just a very sleepy, you know, uh, I think it was like from the opening of the game, just a very relaxed kind of going through the, 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 the first part of the forest. I don't know, I felt like the trailer was almost saying, you didn't think this game was this good, did you? Well, it is. And that, that's kind of the vibe I got from this trailer, and it got me really excited. Yeah, I th it's, it is a super good trailer. Uh, lots of gameplay. When it started, I thought, okay, so we're watching a story trailer here, and then from there out, we're watching gameplay, and that's pretty cool. I mean, yeah, sorry, there are cutscenes. Uh, but a lot of just uh, being proud of like what this game is. I always appreciate that. And uh, again, really good use of your own soundtrack in this case. Yeah, this this one, actually the soundtrack I thought was really good because I thought the timing of a lot of this worked very well from how they, like, once they got into the gameplay, it was a real nice lift under uh, underneath with the music. Having the perspective of having played through all of this game and recognizing so much of it <laughs> maybe spoils my perception a little bit because just like I was saying with Battlefield, it was like, did they just show us the whole game? And in this, I kind of feel like you just showed the whole game. There's some story beats there that aren't that aren't in here, and some characters and stuff. But otherwise, it, like it, it it goes through like a lot. The these action moments are the big action moments, pretty much most of them. <laughs> <laughs> Very quick glimpses. <laughs> but really quick glimpses. Yeah. You know, like it doesn't. I don't feel it spoils the experience because it's like. Yeah. I mean, on one end it's really exciting, and on the other end it's like now I'm in a fiery forest. Now I'm in a pink forest. Okay. It's not like when I play the game and I get to the pink forest, I'm like, oh, I had the pink forest spoiled. <laughs> you know. I also think it does a really good job subtly of introducing gameplay mechanics. You can kind of see him uh, activating different abilities and gaining new abilities as he goes through it. Uh, I really like the, the 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 fire rotating bar that's like classic Mario, you know, uh, that dates back to the original Super Mario Brothers of just having the spinning thing that you got time jumping over. One thing too that I actually talked about on a recent episode, might have been last week or the week before, I was talking about if you're doing really fast cuts to make sure that the subject of the cut is visible in the shot so that you don't have a shot that goes by and my eyes are like looking up or down or, or somewhere where my eyes weren't supposed to be that I can clearly see what you were pointing out when you cut to that thing very quickly. And Ori could potentially get in trouble because the little guy's so tiny. <laughs> and right. you have these shots that are so quick and you have some shots where he's just standing there not doing something and remarkably, I never lose him. I actually like can yeah. always find him. I'm so pretty sure it's a she, by the way. Oh, sorry. I, but it, it's one of those things where they just kind of throw it in there like, oh, okay. Uh, otherwise, you just there's no reason to know. It just looks like little Pokemon. So it, it complements the action that they did a really good job picking good shots to follow shots. So you're not like looking at Ori on one side of the screen and then you're supposed to your eyes are supposed to track Ori, uh, you know, on the other side of the screen. I think all of it flows really well. One great example is when Ori falls. It cuts to a different shot of Ori almost in the same position, landing in the water. A lot of good tracing, you know, the movement throughout the the gameplay instead of just kind of this big mass of like you know, action, and just, you know, kind of like what Battlefield was. It's just kind of like, ah, there's a bunch of crazy stuff happening. I would have been okay if this was like two minutes ten. So I think it would have, it should have been a little bit longer. I think it was a little bit too much of a tease. Although, <laughs> Bloodworth, you said that they pretty much show the entire game. <laughs> it is just gameplay. Uh, I know there's not, like, dialogue in the game, right? It's, it's doing one of those things, kind of like Shadow of the Colossus, where, like, there are voices, but they have subtitles. So, so it's like they're speaking a language, but you don't know what the language is. Maybe if they had like a, a little touch more of context in the beginning. It is really good. I want to give it an 8.9, but I'm just going to give it a 9. I'm going I'm to jump up there. Your heart is speaking to you today. It is. My heart's just, just bursting out of my chest today. Um, so I'll go 9.4 on this one. Wow. Um, I'm with you, Brandon, in that like it's a little silly to keep cutting to shots where Ori is so small. I mean, I think that's just the game. I think the game, Ori is small in most of the yeah, shots of this game. Sure. And so those are kind of the shots you're working with. Um, but yeah, thank you for being proud of your game and showing so much gameplay. That's always appreciated. Uh, especially when your game, you know, looks like, looks like a trailer the whole time. Uh, I probably will give it an 8.5. Uh, I feel like this should have been a little bit more saved. Yeah, you know, like, I feel like I see every ability in the game. I see all the big action sequences, even in the very end action sequences. Uh, oh, no, really? <laughs> so I feel like the, the only thing left is, is some of the, the, the story beats. 
Uh, and, and there's the sense of exploration. Like that's the one thing that uh, I think that's the other thing that bothers me slightly is that it is such a quick actiony trailer that you don't get that sense of I'm I'm just like move around and explore this world and, and figure out where things are, you know, and then there's, you know, like any other type of Metroid style game, there's a lot of backtracking when you get new abilities and, and there's empowerment from that because like I couldn't get there before and now I can and like I don't know all exactly how to show that off in a trailer but you don't the only time you get a slow pace out of this in any way is when you're in a story scene everything else is just like hot action hot action hot action <laughs> So those are the three major trailers that we want to talk about for this week. We are also going to talk about six other trailers. We're going to try to fit it in if we can. We're going to talk about them really quickly, okay guys? Lightning yeah. round! And we are going to also, coming up, watch a trailer that we have never seen before for Lost Within. Uh, which is a debut trailer, and I love those debut trailers. <laughs> I love somebody trying to sell a trailer for the first time. It's also a game I've never heard of, so... But it doesn't sound like a cheesy mobile game. It sounds like there might be some Lost Within? I don't know. It sounds like there could be some drama here. <sighs> Or it could be just like a really Kyle's weird... Kyle sighing and, and touching his forehead. He's not feeling it. He's not feeling Lost, lost Within. Lost Within, I can already tell, is not my kind of game. Amazon Game Studios. Uh, okay. Human so Head is, looks familiar. Is it tablet? Oh, I'm in. Yes, I'm down. I don't care. Yes. Uh-huh. Uh, I'm ready. Wait. Okay. For... I mean, this looks an engine, but I don't. Yeah, that doesn't. It's feel, a little weird. Doesn't feel like gameplay. Oh, your favorite thing, dual worlds, Kyle. <laughs> yeah, this doesn't look an engine at all. But I guess I guess the hallway here does. It doesn't. It looks an engine to me. It doesn't look like gameplay. But I don't know. Right. I could be wrong. He's got. He's combining items. I mean, obviously, it's a first-person game. You don't think they would sell it? Right, that's debut for sure. That's a tease. Oh, that's a Matrix action. What? Uh, they had a little Doctor Who kind of thing going on there. Creepy. Yeah, so this seems like the game. So the beginning oh, that wasn't looks the like game. like Alien, yeah. But now we're getting some game. Whoa. Crazy bearded guy. That person's lost within, clearly. <laughs> and it's part of the logo! <laughs> what? That looks like the Alan Wake logo. Held a little too bit on the end there. <laughs> you know, if you're gonna like zoom up to the to the window and just put the hand up, mm -hmm. uh, I think that's a little silly. So Human Head is a studio who uh, recently had Prey 2 canceled on them. Uh, yeah, I'm not getting the vibe that any of their assets or, or lessons they learned from Prey 2 were going into this game. Yeah, gosh, this is weird. So, right, we're not controlling any of this intro part. I don't think we see things we control until pretty late. I think they're trying to demonstrate what kind of game we're gonna see at this point. Which, on one hand, you know, this is always frustrating when we're, like, seeing something that kind of looks like the game but isn't really the game, but is going to play that way, but we're, like, supposed to believe it's the game. But at the same time, they do show what I feel is the game. I think you have the moment where he chucks the bomb, and I right. think that's, like, a clear, you know, separation between this little intro part to kind of give you a sense of, like, where you are. and, so and that, Yeah, that looks like gameplay there. This looks like a, yeah, a player sure. moving the camera. That looks like an in-game yeah. character, yeah. But those shots are, it's so weird. The just first to... shots, like, they, they look like they're using assets, but then they're touching it up somehow. And especially in the way that moves. Like, it doesn't move like somebody using a controller. Uh, a little bit scary. I, get, I did get a nice, uh, I wouldn't call it a jolt, but I did get a little uh, tremor when uh, he looked to the right and then looked to the left. and uh, Or the player, could be, you know, man or woman, who knows. Uh, looked to the left and th that guy had moved a little bit closer. Extremely generic, though. I mean, yeah, Weather, I like Weather Be Asylum is a fairly generic name, you know, it's like having a scary game in an asylum where you're trying to get out, I mean, that's like, very generic. Yeah, you have to tell us what's different about your game. I think that what is different is the this, like, we're switching back between you being sane and you seeing the reality. I guess that's what it, or time, maybe like we're watching time pass. No, because, I mean, it's like the thing knocking on the door. It, it feels like some somehow reality is shifting in front of you for sure. Yeah. One thing I think is weird, especially about the beginning, is is if you're going to raise the tension, don't, like, just run and then hide under something and then go in. And, like, it just felt too quick. You know, like, you, there's no sense of tension there when you just, oh, hide in this. Oh, no, open the door. No, I'll go over here. It's, it's, it, was just, it felt a little, I don't know, frenetic the right word. It just... Yeah. Does this feel like a full game? Is this going to be... 
Something like a downloadable something? Well, it's on the Amazon platforms, so it's going to be the Kindle Fire TV and that kind of stuff. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you said oh, okay in a very funny way. Well, let me know, you know? I mean, yeah. kind of play it up. You know, I, I think they are trying to sell this like a console game, you know? It's like, you, especially because you have this intro, you know, this CG thing, uh, or weird in-engine, you know, uh, animated sequence where, you know, um, you're trying to sell this, like... I don't know. Maybe this is. Yeah, something. I don't I buy some of those shadows. I think this. I, maybe this opening part like was the trailer for a while. I wonder if the, they like you know sold this to Amazon with that video, and then once they had gameplay, tacked it on, and then that became the trailer. That's funny. Yeah, there is something almost coherent about the first part, the actions of the first part. Uh, I also I, I don't know if there's story in it. I mean, we see the word sun, so I'm curious if like. When he's looking down the hallway, so I'm curious if like, that plays into right. it. Would have maybe liked a little bit of dialogue, a little bit of context. I am extremely biased, though, because it is a horror game, and it is, I just saw an asylum, and I was like, oh, cool, I'm down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, I remember that's, that. That's just my own personal style. Uh, I mean, I think I think it's just kind of dull. I don't think it really does anything. It doesn't, like, offend me, you know, like, uh, I'm not upset by it. Uh, I think I, you know, would maybe check this game out if I had the, it on the platform of choice. Um but the and and because of that, I was leaning on a seven. But I think I'm going to drop to a six point eight, um, just because I, I I like you were saying. I think the major thing is I need to know why this is different. I need to know why this is uh, different than other games that have been placed in asylums or just horror games in general. I'm going to give this a four. I think this is a trailer that hurts its game. I think your first goal when you're making a trailer for a scary game that takes place in asylum is show us why it is different from any other game that takes place in an asylum. Uh, and I'm not sure they succeeded in that. Um, also, don't just uh, throw a bunch of scares together at the end. When that bearded guy comes out of the hole and tries to grab you, no one is frightened. Uh, you just kind of toss it in there, and I, and I don't think it's effective. Uh, you got to pace your trailer like you would pace a scary moment. And when you just toss them back to back to back, uh, they're not scary. This guy just, like, whapping at your door. <laughs> That's not scary. Oh, man. It bums me out. Yeah. I think the trailer could have been better for the debut of this game. Uh, I think I'm going to give this a five. Uh, I, I, I agree with Kyle, and that's not scary whatsoever. And, and part of that is going to be due to the, the limited, you know, technology or whatever. Feeling, you know, like... You know, this is on a Android powered platform or whatever, but it's it's just not scary in like any sense really. It just it, it doesn't it doesn't have the feels <laughs> as we learned last week. <laughs>Okay, here it is, lightning round. We gotta get through six trailers, you ready? Yes! All right. Codename Steam, sing along trailer. Very silly singing. We, we've talked about some singing trailers. We had the Book of Unwritten Tales, which had a funny song and realized it was a silly song. I am musically trained. I did musical theater for more than a decade, and I could not sing along to this song if I tried. <laughs> it's not a song. And I, really, I, I actually like had that thought while I was watching it, and like as the song kept going on, I was like, there's gotta be, there's gotta be notes here somewhere. As much as I love Nightmare Before Christmas, it has the same kind of problem. Like, Jack Skellington just kind of, like, mouths, he, like, says most of the songs and doesn't actually sing them. So, like, you're curious, like, like when I actually finally got, like, the notes of Nightmare, I was like, oh, that's the note. Okay, cool. Um, but, yeah, so that's my issue is that that song's just, it's a bad song. We can't yeah. do better than that. Next, next well, trailer. Well, there's a lot of stuff crammed in there. But uh, what I think, to me, the worst thing is that they kind of, like, they get out of it. And then they have another verse. And I was like, no, stop. It just feels way too long. Whereas the Hearthstone one, we, uh, like, that's over almost too quickly. It's like, wait, that was it? Okay. And there's not much to, you know, let's move on to Hearthstone. There's not much to, uh, you know, the Black, Mark, Black Rock Mountain. It's just new cards. You fight these new bosses. Uh, so I thought that the length of that was really, really good. And I, one of the reasons I thought it was so much better is he doesn't start singing. And so when he starts singing, you know, when, like, the singing comes in, I thought it was kind of silly. I thought it, like, it built the energy up. And then, you you know, I don't know what it is. You initially have that thought of, like, oh, no, singing. You know, and, like, it could be good, but, like, oh, if it's bad, it's it's real bad. Whoever this voice actor is, the Hearthstone voice actor is very good. You feel like he's having a good time 
You know what? It doesn't seem serious. I, and I love the graphical element of this. I think it's a really good trailer. I also really like the Hearthstone campaign in that it's not some cheesy voiceover guy. It's not a dev at Blizzard. It's this character that keeps yeah. selling you all of these additions to Hearthstone. Mm -hmm. That it's just this bartender in Iron Forge that is just so into this card game. And, uh... <laughs> uh, and I really like that. I think it adds like a really good energy to it. Speaking of good energy, Gigantic had a great trailer from PAX East. I've played Gigantic and wasn't a super fan. It was actually, oh, yeah. it was actually an extremely huh. stressful demo session that I had. Um, I believe that was at PAX last year. But one thing I really liked about this that I hadn't seen is... Uh, Kyle, you love 2D art in trailers. <laughs> right. And one, one thing that this trailer did is they, they had silhouette 2D art that was really slowly animated that accented moments of gameplay that we were watching and had already been captured. And I thought that was fascinating. I hadn't seen that before. But they're treated as 2D art. You know what I mean? Yeah. They're not like moving and like, I'm a spaceship taking off. It's like, here is 2D art. That's good. That's a good thing. And yeah. I think it's a good, it does a good job of just accenting moments. So when you see art like that pop up, you know that, okay, when this goes back into gameplay, I'm going to pay attention and I'm not just going to see kind of what they were doing before, which is like, here's this character, here's this character, there's, there, you know, here's her ability, his ability, but pay attention to what's about to happen uh, because like I don't know if people you know when she does that slide towards the the monster at the end like that's the win that's like she's she's crossing the the you know, going to the end zone with the football that's like them winning the match that's like how you win as you you know like it, your monster exposes the weak point of the other monster and then you take him out and like that's the win state that's the, the match is over and so I think they do a good job of, of showing that without you know having some guy like well how you win the game is uh, the monster kills him and then she jumps forward sure the color thing threw me off at first, but I, I definitely enjoyed it. I and it looks really clean uh, in the trailer, at least. And uh, and I liked that what they they kind of like let you focus in on a character at first, and then they moved into gameplay and and like seeing them in gameplay, and so it, it gave you a sense to kind of orient yourself. Mortal Kombat X had a trailer that made Kyle Bossman laugh out loud. This I is a, love this it. is a good trailer. <laughs> Oh my gosh. For the Cage family, which which I appreciated because I actually had some of the people in the office uh, have to tell me that there were siblings now in the Mortal Kombat lore yeah. that I don't know if people just picked out or if they had done research and knew that because none of the trailers really suggested that to me. And so I like that they're coming out and saying, these, these kids here, these are, you know, that Johnny Cage and Sonya Blade got together, got divorced, mm -hmm. uh, and Made had this kid. Made a baby before the divorce. Yeah, yeah. and uh, all these characters have flaws. None of these characters are perfect. They all got attitude that gets in the way of uh, what they have to do sometimes. And uh, and funny moments that here's Johnny just knocked you out, didn't it, Kyle? It absolutely did. I, I, I enjoyed this a lot better than the story trailer we watched a couple weeks ago. I was, it was an oddball on that one, but this one, you know, I was right along with it. Total War Attila had a retrospective trailer focusing on the 15 years of Total War. And I don't know if you know this, guys, but I like retrospective. <laughs> you know what sticks out like a sore thumb in this though is that like their their first iPad game. Yeah, yeah. Everything's progressing. Everything's getting so good, and then here's our iPad game, and then it gets good again. It's like, what? Why did you even put that in? And then I didn't realize it until the end that like this is celebrating everything it's ever been. In its defense, those are my favorite parts of putting together retrospectives, is finding those weird games, those weird yeah. mobile games or something that's like, I bet you didn't know they made this one game. And I think there's like a cool hint of the future at the end. Where you hear a sort of like dragon like roar, you see like blue rocks, and it's just like, hey, there's more coming too, you know? I think also Total War is a kind of franchise that people might not be that familiar with. You yeah. know, might wonder, like, wow, 15 years Total War? Mm -hmm. I, I didn't know that. So, very smart of this franchise to do that. And finally, Warframe, I gotta give a nod to every trailer that Warframe makes. They're extremely cinematic with all of their trailers. And the only issue that I have with this trailer is he, he runs around this station in a completely nonsensical manner. Like, he goes taking off, like, up walls and then jumps over something, and I'm just like, where are you going? Like, why? Like when you see finally where he gets to at the end of the trailer, it's like, you could have gotten there a lot quicker. Like, I don't know what... <laughs> He's a ninja. Yeah, yeah I... I, I... I got, I lost it when he actually got there, because I, you know, I was like, oh, okay, he's doing some cool ninja moves, whatever, and then he gets up there, and he's like, and then, okay, I guess, are these his buddies? I guess these are his buddies, and then he's like, oh, there's a big horde of things coming, and like, and none of that really had any impact to me, like, I was more into seeing him move and traverse. So, actually, so, I felt the opposite, uh... You know how I always say, like, if you have an expansion, like, make it seem like it's a big deal? You know, I don't know anything about Warframe's story and lore, but the way that those characters reacted to these things ro coming from the sky and dropping down, you could tell a big deal was happening. I actually really like that communicated in their body language. But see, this is a game to me that I don't even feel characters. 
Like, to me, I just, I saw four players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because this, this is like a four-player co-op game. You just kind of run around and loot stuff and, and, and beat up crap. So I, I was like, he's like, yeah, that's his custom costume and that's his costume. You know, it's like, it's, so see, like even seeing them as characters, like, yeah, it's Warframe. I, I thought it was a good reveal of whatever these things were. I could tell that they were new. I could tell that the play, that this character that we were seeing, like, didn't really recognize them. I was kind of curious, like, what are these things coming in? I really like the pace at which all of the, the enemies are plopping in at the end. And it does kind of suggest that, like, these characters are getting overwhelmed. I, I, from my perspective, I thought they were enemies. Because he shows up and kind of isn't, like, doesn't wave at them right away. Like, they turn around and I got the vibe that they were about to fight. Kind of like the infamous Warcraft 3 trailer from back in the day. We have the human and the orc. And it's when the elementals first show up. And so it was like, oh, humans and orcs fighting. And it was like, oh, what's this third thing? Okay, we should stop our classic fight and we should worry about this new threat. And, um, I dug that at the end of the trailer, and once again, just a nod to the entire campaign of Warframe. They 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 do way more work than they need to to sell off this game, which uh, is kind of a niche game. And uh, uh, their trailers are very cinematic. I dig them. Uh, Ori in the Blind Forest is my trailer of the week. Gotta go with Mortal Kombat X. Wow. I really like that trailer. I think it's a super good trailer, worth watching. Uh, I'm going with uh, Bloodborne. We all got different picks. Bloodborne. I was going to say Bloodborne goes with Bloodworth, <laughs> and and I'm going to stick with it. I'm going to even say that. Sony's making those jokes. Now, <laughs> so. <laughs> One of those weeks where we all picked different trailers, but that's just how it is. Good, good week for trailers. We had great six, week. Six trailers that we had to talk about, and there were trailers that I even cut from that list. That uh, <laughs> uh, 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 Cliff Blazinski's new game just had a new teaser trailer. All sorts of stuff that we had to ditch. Yeah. Um, so new trailers, never enough time to get through them. That's why there's uh, two parts of the show on GT. One part of the show if you're watching it on YouTube, uh, which I invite you to check out if you're on GT. The uh, this show is also on YouTube. Thank you, Kyle. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Yep. We will see you next week.